Welcome to Eco Ask Why, a podcast that dives into industrial manufacturing topics and spotlights the heroes that keep America running. I'm your host, Chris Granger, and on this podcast, we do not cover the latest features and benefits on products that come to market. Instead, we focus on advice and insight from the top minds of industry because people and ideas will be how America remains number one in manufacturing in the world. Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today, we're going to be talking about military manufacturing, and with us, we have Jackson Henderson, who is an electrical maintenance technician at Owens Corning. So welcome, Jackson. Hey, how's it going? Doing good, man. Hope you're doing well today. I am. I am. It's good to, good to speak with you. Absolutely. I've been looking forward to this podcast and this series. It's such an important topic and issue and the, the journey from the military to manufacturing and, and the different routes and very excited for you to, to share your story and love to just kind of learn, hey, what branch did you serve in? So I was in the Air Force. Basically what I did in there is uh, aircraft armament systems and aircraft armament systems. What we do is we uh, we load bombs. Yeah, I did the good stuff in uh, Minot, North Dakota, nice. where the high high temperatures are about 100 and the lows are like negative 60. So, yeah. Wow, man. So that's a pretty big swing. So you were loading bombs. So, I mean, what type of other roles did you do while you were in the Air Force there? So, yeah, basically we had multiple different roles. Um, so aircraft armament systems, which you're in charge of, is making sure the weapon systems of the aircraft were uh, squared away from everything that was dealing with the bombs and the, the bomb racks. And we would load those up and take them down, make sure that the pilots had stuff to train with. Uh, there'd be times where we would moan and groan about having to load an aircraft with uh, different equipment just because a pilot might need a certain amount of flying hours on a specific aircraft just with things on the wing or just with things in the bomb bay. So mm -hmm. that was that was a, a big part of our of our maintenance was just making sure that certain things were on certain aircraft when the Air Force needed it on there. Right. So, I mean, how long were you were you in? I was in almost four years. I got out because of medical, and it was all in Minot, North Dakota. Well, my basic training was in San Antonio, and then I left there to go to Wichita Falls, Texas, to do my technical school. That was about six months, or I think it was four months. And then um, I left there and went to Minot and was in Minot the rest of the time. Wow. Okay. Well, I mean, I mean, on behalf of Eco and myself, thank you for your service first and foremost. That's cannot go unsaid. So, you know, when you thank were you. working that transition, going from the military to the civilian life, what were some of the areas that you found that you needed support in? I would probably say, basically, just making sure that I know what to expect from companies. I definitely would say the military just has a different style of operating and not every company is the same, but in the military, I feel like everything was very structured and you knew what you were going to get a lot of the times and in civilian life, that's, it's not the same. So that transition of just, Hey, I mean, there's a lot in the military where you're, you're trained to, to go with the flow. Like when things change, you adapt. You just do a lot of adapting in the military, but that was something that you kind of have to get used to in the civilian world is, well, this is how we do it. So you have to just adapt to what's going on. And I think military prepared me for that, but it's it's just a different world. The um, the business world and corporate and all these kind of things, every, everything's a little different. It can be a challenge, can it, my friend? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you're, you're right. I mean, on one of the previous episodes with Mary, she was talking about that's one of the traits that she admires the most is how quickly the military training teaches you to adapt. Because I mean, I mean, you guys are you you have to with the, the constantly changing environment. So sometimes you know with uh, industry, it can be hard because people get set in their ways and they just conform here. And then I I love to saying, well, I don't love it, but we've always done it that way. I'm sure you 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 like that one too, right? I hate that. <laughs> I hate that. I know, man. I know. You know, if you're not changing and not pivoting, you're not going to make it. So, um, I, yeah. I, I feel you there. So, 
No, what attracted you then? If you got to looking out, you were getting out the military, what kind of led you to manufacturing or industry in general? What really captivated me, their pitch when they were talking about the robots and working with stuff like that. And because I really wanted to get into engineering when I got out of the military, I wanted to, I have a bachelor's degree in business management. That was before I joined the military. And then while I was in, I just saw what was going on. And I said, I'm getting out and I'm getting either mechanical, aerospace, or electrical engineering degree. I was like, that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to make better aircraft than what we're working on. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And um, But I actually ended up uh, not doing that. But that's, you know, it's similar to what I do now as far as engineering wise. A lot of electrical engineers have jobs that I do in the automation industry, but that's really what attracted me to it was dealing with robots, dealing with things that are automated and trying to troubleshoot and problem solve when things aren't exactly going correctly. And that's really captivating. If you're somebody who enjoys having to fix a problem and being able to be the one who can come in and pretty much save the day or pretty much figure out what nobody else can figure out. It's, it's really interesting. It really is. I mean, so when, when you say robots and automation, where did you get that exposure? Was it through the military you saw that and you kind of knew you wanted to go down that path or was it other means? It's definitely just other things that I've seen. Like, uh, have you ever seen that company Boston Dynamics? No, talk to us about it. So Boston Dynamics is a company, I believe, in Massachusetts, and they are making all different kinds of robots for it's I don't think it started out for the military, but they make them for the military. I think DARPA has actually taken over them and they make things like uh, they've got a, a robot called Spot and it's like a dog and it's made huge leaps and bounds. But that's when I saw that kind of stuff, I was like, man, that's awesome. Like your job all day is to make a robot and to just get it to do things that eventually are going to save lives. I I predict that Boston dynamics is going to make tons of robots for the fire department, the police department, the military, so that they're going to end up saving people's lives. And, you know, we lose a lot of firefighters and police officers and military members because they're going into situations where they can't see and we could easily just throw a robot in there and it could see everything for them and we could save lives. Like literally people will be able to come home to their families because somebody, a company decided to make a robot to go in the line of fire when their son, their daughter, their husband, their wife didn't have to. So Jackson, there was this company that we did earlier in the podcast with our, our guest Rob Bakshi called Intuitive Robotics, and they're the company that does surgical robotic arms. And you may have saw a commercial where there were there was a, a robot that was peeling a grape. So this is that company. So you know, definitely, I can appreciate how you know you're so passionate about this the same way Sarab was. That was something that just naturally gravitated him to to the industry. So it sounds like a really cool company that that has a great purpose in front of it, man. That's awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. It's the technology is definitely going to advance. And a lot of people, you know, we talked about this at the program at AEM. We talked about how uh, technology will, it'll take some jobs away from people because they're, we can just automate it. But At the same time, it creates even more jobs because people have to know how to put that stuff together. People have to know how to troubleshoot. People have to know how to maintain that kind of stuff. It's a great thing. I think the advancement of technology and what Rockwell is doing and how they're viewing this progression as as human beings, it's a great thing. No doubt. I mean, you you said something that, that I know some of our listeners may not be aware of. So I'd like to explore a little bit more. You said AAM, which is the Academy of, of Advanced Manufacturing. So can you talk to our listeners a little bit about AAM and how did you learn about it and, and what that process was like? So, yeah, the transition out of the military began with me and my wife just wanting to travel a little bit. So uh, we drove from from Minot to Alabama. Then we went up to her 
her family's place in Ohio and then traveled down the East coast. And I was like, let me get all this traveling out, then find a job. Well, um, I found a job working on like telecommunications and working on uh cell service, that kind of stuff, putting up 5g. And while I'm out on the road one day, uh, I'm on the phone with my wife and I get a phone call while I'm on the phone with her and it's from Wisconsin. And I'm just like, I don't know anybody in Wisconsin, but shoot, let me, let me call him back. So I call him back and it's, it's Bill Moss. He's one of the recruiters for the program. And he's telling me about this program that they have where it, you know, it helps train veterans on automation industry and dealing with robots and conveyor systems. And I'm just like, I don't know what that is, but yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, they invited me and you have to take some tests to see if you can acclimate to the training because they don't want to bring you in and you're not even equipped at all to to do the stuff. But, you know, they're investing a lot into you as far as like your room and meals and stuff like that. And so they, they want to make sure your investment will will come out. So they give you some tests. And if you pass all the tests, then they'll formally invite you. And so after I got invited, I came up there and started the program. And I was extremely happy that I made that decision to to quit my job and to to join the program. Yeah, man. I mean, so what kind of tests were they that you guys had to take just for like baseline evaluation type stuff? So some of it was pretty simple and others was as very complicated. Uh, basically, what we had to do was a lot of mathematical and also things that involve critical thinking. So they want to they want to know that you can do things that are going to be incorporated with the job. You know, you got you got to know how to do some sort of math in this in this career field. And then also, you know, can you can you figure out, can you troubleshoot, can you understand a situation when you're you're really not familiar with it? Right. And I would say the ma- the majority of us didn't know what was what was in the program. We we just knew basic electricity, basic mechanical skills, and we were just going from there. I mean, that three months, it sounds like you guys are getting poured into. What do you remember the most about that experience? Oh, man, it was definitely just the experience of that that shock factor of I don't know what this is, but I need to learn it. (laughs) And, and, you know, you get excited about uh, at least I did. You know, I I love learning new things. I, I get captivated by by figuring something new out. So that was that was almost every single day we were given a task that pretty much nobody knew how to do. But at the end of the day, we knew that we were we were going to learn something new and it was going to be something that we actually needed to retain. You know, and in, in high school, people make jokes that you don't need anything that you learned in high school. But while we were in this program, it's everything that we were learning pertain to what we needed to do when we go out into this career field everything was necessary. Yeah, it was all legit, right? I mean, it was no no fluff there. Absolutely. Now, when I saw the, uh, I got sent some of the videos, it looks like the lab environment was just unbelievable. So can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, so basically what we had was we had a classroom and it was like a conference room. Um, I was at the Milwaukee location. They have two, it's one in Cleveland, one in Milwaukee. And the Milwaukee one is the Allen Bradley slash Rockwell headquarters. And they had a whole new area that was set up and it has different conference rooms. So there was while we were in our classroom, there would be business meetings going on for Rockwell. And so we had to maneuver around people sometimes, but it was very controlled environment. We would go from the classroom to the lab and in the lab we would they would have these um, I.O. situations, inputs and outputs, and we would wire those up and they give us all kinds of quizzes and tests on how to how to do certain things. And we just basically had to learn on PLCs and power supplies and HMIs and all this new technology that we were not familiar with. Man, it also sounds like just due to the location, what a great opportunity to network, right? Just with the people within Rockwell itself being there. 
Absolutely. There was, um, <laughs> so we actually started, I, I keep saying we were making jokes, but that's, that's pretty much what we did the whole time. You get a bunch of military members together and it's pretty much a comedy fest, but uh, right. <laughs> we were talking about the CEO. We were just talking about how he, he might be a myth. Like they, he, he will, we'll never see him where they just talk about, him, but we'll never see him. And one time we were leaving, it was the end of the day and we were leaving. And if you leave the area where we were in and it's just a big open hallway and there's, there's four elevators, two on your left, two on your right. And at the end of the hallway is this massive room and it's, um, they have a big lobby in that room. And then on the far end is the CEO's like conference room and his office is back there. Well, we were leaving one day and he was walking straight for us. And we were like, that's Blake. <laughs> like there he is. And um, I was just like, Hey, and he was like, Hey guys, how's it going? And we just talked to him. Very cool guy. Absolutely cool. Uh, we got in the elevator with him and he was just asking us, how's the program? How's everything going? We were telling him and it was just a really neat experience to be able to, you know, talk to a CEO of a, a major world corporation. I believe Rockwell is the leading company in automation in the whole world. So it was it was great to, you know, just have that one on one in an elevator talk with the CEO like that. That's awesome, man. That's uh that's a memory for a lifetime right there. So that's that's great. No doubt, man. That that's uh that was a lot of fun. And from a technical standpoint with the program, I know you got a lot of our listeners out there, they're like, Man, I want a part of this. So can you talk to them a little bit? How would you explain the technical training to someone that may be interested in look in looking into this? So with the training, it was a lot of classroom and then lab. So what we would do is we would be in the classroom. And they would teach us basic information on what we were about to use in the lab. So we had these books. They would give us all kinds of notes. And they gave us plenty of stuff to take notes and and to take home with us. But all that training developed slowly over time. So it was, hey, this is what you're going to be learning about. Let me teach you this. Let me teach you that. And then okay, now let's go in the lab and do the things we were just talking about. And that was, it was a phenomenal experience to be able to go from, okay, this is what a PLC is. These are what, these are the IO you can use. Uh, These are the commands that you can program and code and ladder logic. And, and okay, now let's go to the lab and let's write a code. Let's go, let's go program this HMI to do this. And it was, it was hands down, probably one of the best experiences as far as like, knowing something brand new and then being able to just go do it right afterward. No doubt. I went through an old dominion electrical engineering technology program. And, and that's why I chose that program too, because it was designed very similar. It's a four year engineering degree, but it has the theory classes go with labs. And that's what I really, what kind of drew me to that. Cause I'm more of a hands-on, you know, like, like a lot of people are, I can get a certain amount by reading, but really let me get my hands on it. Then I can figure it out the next level. So that's, that's awesome that it, the program is designed that way. And Mary was also talking to us about, they don't only focus on the technical piece, but there's some professional development type training. So can you, can you explain a little bit of that to us? Absolutely. So we had, we had a woman come in, her name was Robin and Robin was absolutely phenomenal. She did a great job at, first of all, dealing with us, (laughs) uh, everything was, everything was a joke and we were trying to make everything funny, but she, she definitely did a good job at just helping us focus on, on all different kinds of things as far as like that transition into the corporate world and that transition into, you know, working with other people and developing those soft skills and, it was just awesome because they actually let us go to um, the company that really hired us, quote unquote, was Manpower. And so Manpower, what they did was they let us come to their facility. So we basically took like a field trip some days and went to the Manpower facility and they did some soft skill training there. We would do like some projects where we were supposed to build, I think we we're supposed to build a tower with like, Gosh, I can't remember if it was two picks or like popsicle sticks or something. But the whole point was everybody had a role 
everybody had a job to do and we were supposed to get the job done the best way we can with the tools we had and the task at hand. So they, they helped us learn ourselves. We took tests on learning ourselves, uh, kind of like that Myers Briggs test. And we, we did stuff like that just to, just to figure out who we are and then to figure out who others are and how to deal with others. Cause it, you know, it, in the military, you're used to dealing with people who are completely different than who you are. And that's the same thing in the, the business world and the civilian world. It's you got to learn how to deal with people who you're not used to and who you might not like. You might not agree with those people, but at the end of the day, you still got to work with them. So that's that's a lot of the stuff that we worked on was, um, hey, you're you're not like me. You're you're different than me. But how can we still get the job done, even though we're different? Right. I mean, it just sounds like the whole training experience is very well rounded and it covers the technical aspect that you need to bring value to a company, you know, from a technical standpoint, but you also need to be able to work with others and to understand yourself. So it just hats off, man. It sounds like a, a phenomenal experience for you and the, and the others through the AAM. And so the listener that's out there right now, uh, Jackson, that wants to to take this to the next level, what advice would you give them uh, if they want to pursue this further? I would definitely just try to reach out to anybody. You could definitely contact me. Uh, you can contact anybody. You can look up the AM program and just figure out a way to get yourself involved in what's going on. Because I, I definitely believe it's it's something that is going to be booming in the future. I mean, it's slowly the industry is going to just take over a lot of stuff. And I'm I'm definitely glad I, I was able to ride the wave at the time that I have. But if if you're wanting to pursue this path, I would definitely just try to reach out to people and also just, you know, get as much information as you can and, and learn about what's going on because it's it's definitely something to get into. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I mean, your career is, has nothing but upside in front of you, man. I mean, it's, it's great. You know, now that you've gone through this training, what do you find that you're enjoying the most at work? What 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 type of responsibilities or duties do you find that that you really enjoy for what you're with what you're doing? I would probably say it's <laughs> it's it's like being a wizard. Like <laughs> uh, a lot of times they'll they'll ask me to do something, and it might take me a second to figure out what I need to do. But once I've done it, they're like, "How'd you do that?" or "What what'd you do?" And I'm just like, "Uh." It's kind of hard to explain, but it just seems like magic to everybody else. But, you know, it's it's very simple stuff a lot of times. And it just takes it just takes knowing what's going on. So being able to just come in and like this morning, you know, I t today is my off day at work. But I got a phone call at four o'clock this morning and I head into work and I had to help out with an issue that was going on and I'm there to give my advice and to, and to help out in any way I can. And, you know, some people, they would be absolutely livid to be called in on their off day, but you know, it's, it's being able to help and to do what you need to do because I mean, at the end of the day, it's your job, you know, and if you don't really like what you do, then you're not going to enjoy it, but I like what I do. So I enjoy being able to come in and do that kind of stuff. Man, that's a great story, Jackson. I mean, just the fact that you were calling it, but you also, you see the value, you know, well, others see the value in you and they're calling you because you are the wizard, right? I mean, you, you got the, you got the magic yeah. sauce, man. I mean, you know, you know how to put it all together. I mean, that is, that is so good. So I think there are a lot of people in this career field that completely, you know, understand what you're saying when you have that sense of fulfillment, when, when, when you're called and it's an emergency, and you get it fixed. There's just there's just something special about that moment, you know. And that's where we're trying to inspire people to to really look at manufacturing and look at industry a little different. So uh, thank you for sharing that story, man. That was great. Thank you. So we we love to take these episodes, Jackson, and, and talk a little bit about outside of the career field and things people like to do for enjoyment. Any hobbies you like to share with our listeners? Absolutely. So I do music, and I also. I do podcast and I, I do a lot of different stuff. So when I'm not at work, I'm, I'm constantly busy. I'm actually reading a book right now for a friend. I do narrating and stuff like that. So, and it's actually interesting. There's a lot of similarities with music and 
in this automation career field because you deal with electronic things as far as like knowing bit rates and stuff like that. I mean, you have to know that kind of stuff to know what's going on and frequencies and it's all that stuff is involved together. It's intertwined. So I was honestly, it kind of helped me become a better musician knowing the things for my job. Like while we were in the AM program, I, I was like, Oh, that's, that's what that means. Or that's, that's what that does. And it was, it was really interesting. That's really cool, man. So I mean, what's the name of your podcast? And some of our listeners may want to check it out. It's called Romera R O M E R A records podcast and i've got it on spotify uh apple Podcasts, uh, google play i think google google play is going away actually i think they're becoming youtube music so i'm not sure well there's google podcast and i've also have it on youtube so you can check it out on youtube as well if you want some visuals very cool i mean we'll, and we'll uh we'll put in our show notes here we'll put the link so people can check it out and 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 see what your your episodes are all about so it sounds like you you got your hands full outside of work, my friend. That is awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's funny that I just hope and pray sometimes that they don't call me in when I'm, you know, trying to do a podcast or something. And it's great having all the hobbies, but you know, I try to balance between work and my personal life. And it's, I mean, it's been easy so far. I don't get called in much. I think I've only been called in a few times on the weekend to do stuff. So it's it's really not that bad. Right. Well, we also, I mean, you mentioned, you know, you try to balance your personal life. Anything about your family that you like to share with our listeners or what you got going on? Yeah. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, me and my wife, Rachel, we've been together since 2017 and, um, she has definitely enjoyed, enjoyed every bit of this. Uh, when I told her, it's like, Hey, I've got to go to Wisconsin for three months. Uh, <laughs> it was kind of funny, but she she was definitely along the ride. And I told her, hey, I'm, I'm going to get a good job out of it. And the crazy part was when, I guess I should have mentioned this earlier. So when we're in the program, I think it's like week four. And they're telling us, okay, we know who the companies are. And that was like, so in the military, you have your your wish list. And your wish list is where you're wishing you can go, (laughs) like where where you want to get stationed at. And that's what it felt like. It felt like we just we filled out our wish list and we were trying to find out what companies we're going to be able to go to. And they're scattered all over the place. Uh, Smuckers was one of the places and they were close to the Denver, Colorado area. Uh, We had. Hershey. Hershey was in Pennsylvania. Uh, we had companies in Wisconsin. We had uh, at Rockwell. You know, we had companies all over the place. Um, but I was telling my wife about where we could possibly end up. And, you know, she's she's got her preferences and stuff like that. But it's that was it was a little nerve wracking, not knowing where where we'll be. But at the same time, it was exciting because you know, we're, we're going to get to move someplace. And a lot of the, a lot of the companies were willing to give you assistance. They were, they were trying to give you like a signing bonus to help you move and to, to get to where you're going. Uh, the furthest place is probably, uh, California. There was a company, uh, actually it was Owens Corning. They, they were hiring in Compton, California. And then they were also hiring in Memphis and Minnesota, Minneapolis. But, um, yeah, it's it was just that excitement of just being able to talk to her and us make a decision together on where we're going to go. And some people had wives and they've had, you know, kids and different age groups. There were people who were in their 20s and people who were in, I think, their late 40s or I think I think a guy was in his late 40s. I don't think he was in his 50s. I can't remember. But, you know, that it was just, you know, that family aspect of what's going to happen next. And it was, it was definitely exciting and, uh, nerve wracking, but you know, everything works out. It does, man. It definitely does. And it just sounds like just to have that, that type of opportunity in front of you just sounds like a wonderful, just, just a wonderful experience and program. And, you know, I, I, I thank you so much, Jackson, for walking through this for our listeners. And we, and we love to kind of wrap up the eco ask why 
episodes with the why where we talking about purpose. So if you had to uh, put your personal why behind the importance of, of, a, of a program like this and what it's done for your life, you know, what would it be? I would say if you feel like you want it to be a part of something that is just going to be a, a new wave, if you want to be a part of something that is life changing, then I would definitely suggest this program. If you want to do something that's just different and and just change your and your life, as I said, I was working telecommunications. I almost became a police officer. Like I was just looking for all kinds of different jobs. But when I found this program, I was extremely excited. I was just happy that it was something that people took the effort to to train veterans because it's such a big need. It's such a big need to to get veterans into jobs that are, you know, we're we're highly skilled, but a, a lot of military members they they don't have bachelor's degrees or associate's degrees or you know, they don't have that quote unquote education that people, you know, are really looking for, but they can do they can get the job done. At the end of the day, that's what we train to do is get the job done. And that's what Rockwell uh, understood. They understood, hey, these are a bunch of people who know how to get the job done if you train them. If you just give them a little tidbits of what they need to know, they can they can do it. So that's what I believe that anybody who just knows that you're willing to make the sacrifice to to go to Cleveland or go to Wisconsin uh, for for three months, 12 weeks and, and make a bond with a bunch of people that you have no idea who they are and then learn, I would definitely suggest the program because it'll, it'll literally change your life. It's, it's helped me grow as a person and it's helped me grow in, in my business as Romero records. And I think it's, it's something that if you just take the time to do it, you'll, you'll, you won't regret it. That's for sure. No doubt. And I mean, the only thing I'll add add to that, Jackson, is that you know they were just as as privileged to get someone like you with your caliber. I mean, you, you're you've done great things, and I'm so glad. It just sounded like it was a great match for the AAM, but but for you also as as a man. So thank you so much. You you brought a lot of inspiration. I know we have some listeners that are hopefully taking a lot of notes. They're going to be checking out some of the links that we drop here to uh, to to learn more. And I just cannot thank you enough for, for taking the time with us today on Eco Ask Why, my friend. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm glad you reached out to me. I say thanks to to Mary and thanks to to Dustin for, for reaching out to me. And it's been a definitely a privilege to be able to be on here and spread the information. You know, I'd I'd love to <laughs> we were talking about that'd be a great job to just be able to go out to military bases and to tell them about this program and to tell them, Hey, there's life after the military. A lot of people stay in the military because they don't, they don't know what to do when to get out. So they just stay in, but you know, that's great. You know, if you want to stay in and retire and, you know, do 20, 30 years, that's great. But if you, if you're just scared to get out because you're not sure what else to do, you know, you have other opportunities and this is, this should be at the top of your list. No doubt. And I would, I would ask for our listeners out there, Share this with the people within your network that may be in the military and thinking about their next steps. I know we all know people who serve. This is a program worth considering, worth investigating, and uh, you can definitely hear the impact it's had in Jackson's life. So thank you again, my friend. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by Electrical Equipment Company. Eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com.